Did you know that Satan's final fate is already sealed and that even so, millions of people will still be deceived? This may seem unbelievable, but the book of Revelation reveals to us one of the greatest secrets about the last days of mankind. Satan will be defeated. And not only that, you can be part of the greatest victory the world has ever seen. What is to come is not just a distant prophecy, it is something that is about to happen and that will affect the fate of all of us. But why are so many people still unaware of this essential truth? Get ready, because today you will find out what no one told you. Now imagine living a thousand years of absolute peace, ruled by Jesus, but still seeing people rebel in the end. How is this possible? The kingdom of God will be established on earth, but surprisingly, many will still choose to follow the path of evil. You are about to understand why, even in the face of perfection, human nature can still become corrupted. This is the shocking revelation that most people overlook when reading Revelation and one that can completely change the way you view your faith. You may be thinking, if Satan is going to be arrested, why will he be released again? What is the purpose of this? And more importantly, what can you do to avoid being scammed? Today, I'm going to walk you through the most dramatic and decisive events in human history, from Satan's imprisonment to his latest rebellion. But what many don't know is that these events aren't just about the future they're already in motion right now. Your future is being decided, and every choice you make today will echo for eternity. The book of Revelation is not just a story about the end times, but a manual of spiritual survival for today. If you think the end is still far away, prepare for a surprise. The prophecies are being fulfilled before our eyes. And the question that remains is, are you ready to face what lies ahead? Stay with me, because I'm going to show you how you can prepare for these events. Now pay close attention, because what you are about to discover can completely change the course of your life. This video will reveal deep secrets about the ultimate battle between good and evil, secrets that many don't want you to know. What if I told you that you are already living the prelude to this battle? Yes, you are part of this story, and your role is much more important than you think. At the end of this video, we will pray together that you will be prepared for the final events that are approaching. So if you're looking for answers, this is the time. By the end of the video, you will not only understand the ultimate fate of Satan and humanity, but you will also discover what you need to do to ensure your victory on the side of Christ. Don't miss this chance to completely transform your view of what's to come. Time is running out, and the choice is in your hands. Since the beginning of time, the battle between good and evil has been a constant. Satan, God's great adversary, started his rebellion in heaven, taking with him a legion of fallen angels. Since then, he has been dedicated to deceiving and destroying God's creation. But Revelation, the last book of the Bible, reveals that this conflict will come to an end. The return of Jesus marks the beginning of Satan's final downfall. The Bible describes a series of devastating events, from the opening of the seven seals through the trumpets and bowls of God's wrath, to the triumphant return of Christ, when he will come in glory to establish his kingdom on earth. When Jesus returns, he will defeat the armies of evil in the Battle of Armageddon, as described in Revelation 19. It will be a decisive confrontation where the forces of Satan will be destroyed and the kingdoms of this world will be given over to Jesus Christ. It is at this point in history that Satan, the great deceiver, will finally be stopped. A powerful angel sent by God will descend from heaven with a key and a chain. This scene described in Revelation 20, 1, 3 is an important milestone. Satan will be arrested and thrown into the abyss, where he will no longer be able to seduce the nations. This moment is crucial. For the first time since the fall of Adam and Eve, the earth will be free from Satan's direct influence. He will be chained and confined in the abyss for a thousand years. This imprisonment is not only symbolic, it is a representation of God's absolute triumph over evil. During that time, the millennial reign of Christ will be established and peace will reign. Imagine what it will be like to live in a world where temptation and deception no longer beset us. A period in which the faith, 
grace of God and the righteousness of Jesus will be fully manifested. However, even with Satan bound, human nature will still need redemption. During these thousand years, it will be a time of revelation and judgment. People will have the opportunity to choose to trust God or go astray, even without Satan's direct presence. As Matthew 25, 31, 32 reveals to us, Jesus will judge the nations, separating the righteous from the wicked. This will be the first major step towards the final judgment. Satan's arrest is a prelude to the promised peace and prosperity, but also a test of the true faithfulness of human hearts. This is a period that anticipates the final battle. Despite being imprisoned, Satan has yet to meet his final fate. The millennium will be a time of great peace and prosperity on earth, but it will also serve as a preparation for the last confrontation between good and evil. And here's the point that brings us to the next event, the moment when Satan will be released briefly, setting the stage for the final battle that will define his eternal destiny. After the thousand years of peace and righteousness in the millennial kingdom, the Bible reveals something surprising. Satan will be released for a brief period. This may seem contradictory after a thousand years of harmony, but it is part of God's sovereign plan. Satan's deliverance is mentioned in Revelation 27, 8, and his mission will be the same as always, to deceive the nations. Although during the millennium many have experienced the peace of Christ, some hearts will still remain hardened. And it is precisely at this moment that Satan will return to the scene, ready to sow chaos and deceit once again. When Satan is released, he will quickly gather a large army, known as Gog and Magog, to try once again to challenge God and his people. Here we see the persistence of evil, even after a thousand years of peace. Many will wonder, how is it possible that after a long period of righteousness and peace, there are still people ready to follow Satan? The truth is that human nature, without complete spiritual transformation, is still prone to sin. As in Matthew 7.13, 14, Jesus warns us that the road to perdition is wide, and many follow it, even when the evidences of God's goodness are clear. This army, made up of those who have rejected God's grace, will be Satan's last effort to overthrow the divine plan. He will deceive the nations, urging them to turn against the kingdom of Christ. But this movement will be quickly contained. The rebellion will not last long, for God's final judgment is near. As it was at the Battle of Armageddon, Satan's defeat will be decisive and swift. He will have no more power, and the end of his reign of terror is about to come. The purpose of this temporary deliverance is profound, to show that without God's full intervention, mankind remains vulnerable to sin and deception. While deliverance from Satan may seem like a step backwards, it serves to expose the depth of rebellion in many hearts. Even in a perfect world, with Jesus reigning, some will still choose to follow the path of destruction. And this leads us to reflect on our own lives today. How many times are we tempted to follow paths that we know lead us away from God? Satan's deliverance is a final test for mankind, a test that many will fail, but one that also sets the stage for the final judgment. The next step is crucial. With his army assembled, Satan will prepare for the last battle. It will be the final confrontation between good and evil, where Satan's eternal destiny will be sealed once and for all. Now that he is free, it remains to be seen how God will handle this latest insurrection and what the eternal consequences will be for him and his followers. Even with Satan imprisoned and Jesus reigning for a thousand years in righteousness and peace, there will still be an intriguing question. Why will some people, at the end of this period, be so easily deceived when Satan is released? This is one of the great mysteries of human nature. Revelation 27, 8 tells us that after the millennium, Satan will go forth to deceive the nations once again. And the amazing thing is that he will find people willing to follow him even after they live under Christ's perfect rule. But why? The human heart, no matter how much it is in a perfect environment, still carries the burden of sin. During the thousand years of the millennial kingdom, sin will not have the direct influence of Satan but the sinful nature will still be present in many. This reveals a hard but essential truth. 
The problem of sin is not only in the external circumstances, but within each person. Even with Jesus physically reigning over the earth, the choice to follow God remains a matter of faith and inner surrender. This freedom of choice is what makes some still choose to rebel at the end of the millennium. The thousand-year period will be a time of peace like never before. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, will rule justly, and the Bible's promises will be fulfilled. Isaiah 2. 4 describes that there will be no more war, and even the instruments of war will be transformed into tools of work. It will be a time of prosperity and harmony, where humanity will live without fear, without inequality, and without the afflictions we know today. However, it will also be a time of testing, where hearts will be exposed. Brothers and sisters, before we go any further, I would like to bring you some very important information. You know, even if you're subscribed to the channel, you may not be getting all the notifications for the new videos. YouTube works in a way that prioritizes content with the most engagement. To make sure you don't miss our next messages, do the following. Check your subscription, turn on notifications by clicking on the bell, and if possible, leave a like and comment on the videos. This helps YouTube understand that you want to see our content. Okay, now let's get back to our subject. Even in a perfect environment, with Jesus walking among us, there will be those who approach him only for convenience without really giving their heart. And this makes us reflect how many times in our own lives do we seek God only when we need something without actually surrendering our lives to him. The millennial kingdom shows us that it is not the environment that determines our faithfulness, but the inner transformation that comes by faith. Jesus will be present, ruling with wisdom and power, but each person will have to choose day by day to follow his promises. It is a profound lesson in the importance of true conversion. Living in God's presence alone does not guarantee salvation. It takes genuine surrender and constant faith. So why will some still be deceived? Because the human heart, without total transformation by faith in Jesus, is still susceptible to sin. Even with Satan's influence away for a thousand years, the inner sin will remain. External peace does not guarantee internal peace. And this is the great question that the Millennial Kingdom makes us face. As Jeremiah 17, 9 teaches us, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Even under the reign of Christ, there will be those who, deep down, resist the truth and choose the path of rebellion. And so the millennium ends with one last test for humanity. After a thousand years of peace, Satan will be set free, and we will see who has indeed chosen to follow God from the heart. This thousand-year period, which should be a time of rest and faith, will also be an opportunity for every human being to evaluate his true standing before God. And that brings us to the next point, the judgment of the nations, where Jesus will separate those who chose to follow the truth from those who gave in to Satan's ultimate deception. After the period of a thousand years, when Satan is definitively defeated, one of the most awaited moments in the biblical narrative will take place, the judgment of the nations. That judgment will be the opportunity for Jesus, the righteous king, to bring to light all the actions of individuals and nations throughout the centuries. Matthew 25, 31, 46 gives us a clear vision of this event where Jesus, seated on his throne of glory, will separate the sheep from the goats, that is, the righteous from the wicked. This moment will be crucial in determining the ultimate destiny of each human being based on their choices and actions throughout life. But what exactly will be judged? It will not only be the outward behavior, but the heart and intentions behind each action. Many may have behaved well outwardly during the Millennial Kingdom, but their inward motivations may still be tainted by sin. It will be a time of revelation, where all masks will fall, and the true nature of each person will be exposed before Jesus. In this judgment, the righteous, who have kept their faith in God and lived according to His commandments, will be received into the Eternal Kingdom. The wicked, who have rejected God's grace and promises will face eternal punishment. The judgment of the nations also serves to show that God is just in all His ways. During the Millennial Kingdom, 
many will have the opportunity to live under Jesus' rule. But even so, some will still choose the path of rebellion. This free choice is a reflection of God's mercy, which gives us the chance to make our own decisions. However, this judgment is also a warning that our choices have eternal consequences. The Bible teaches us in Romans 14.12 that each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, the trial will not be a surprise, but the inevitable consequence of every decision made. That judgment will be a global revelation, where the nations that persecuted God's people or oppressed the righteous will also be called to account. God is a God of justice, and His promises of peace and prosperity will be fulfilled for those who have remained faithful. But for the wicked, it will be the time when they will finally face eternal punishment. This final judgment also highlights something important. The kingdom of God is not just about living in a perfect environment, but about transforming the heart and giving oneself totally to Jesus. The big question that arises is, are we ready for this judgment? How are we living our lives now, knowing that each of our actions will be brought to light on that great day? The judgment of the nations is not just about the future, it is a warning for the present. Jesus calls us to live faithfully, trusting in God and seeking His will in all things. And this leads us to reflect on the central role of Israel in this time, as it will be the nation chosen by God to lead under the rule of Christ during the Millennial Kingdom. During Jesus' millennial reign, Israel will assume a prominent position on the global stage, fulfilling the promises made by God throughout Scripture. Jerusalem, the city that was once the scene of conflicts and wars, will become the center of Christ's rule. This radical change shows how God has always had a specific plan for His chosen people, even in the most difficult moments of their history. Prophecies such as Zechariah 14, 9 make it clear that the Lord will be king over all the earth, and Jerusalem will be the capital of that kingdom. Israel, often despised and persecuted over the centuries, will finally be exalted as the most powerful nation on earth. Israel's enemies, who have so often risen up to destroy it, will be witnesses to its glorification. God, in His faithfulness, will fulfill all the promises He made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The book of Isaiah 2, 2, 3 describes a time when all nations will go up to the Lord's mountain to learn of His ways, and God's word will go forth from Jerusalem, making it a spiritual beacon to the world. However, Israel's central role will not only be political or military. It will be a spiritual center where Jesus will reign as the promised Messiah. During the millennium, all nations will recognize Christ's authority and seek his guidance. And this leads us to reflect on how God always used Israel as an exemplary nation, not for its strength, but for being the people through whom he would reveal his grace and redemption to the world. Israel will be a living witness to the fulfillment of biblical promises and their restoration will be a sign that God never forgets his covenants. This central role of Israel will also be a powerful reminder of God's eschatological plan. Many may ask, why Israel? Why this small and often marginalized nation? The answer lies in the biblical narrative itself. God chose Israel as the people through whom Jesus, the Savior, would come into the world. Now in the millennial kingdom, Israel will be the conduit through which peace, justice, and eternal salvation will be manifested on a global scale. The promises made to David that his seed would reign forever will finally be fulfilled. But the most impressive thing is that even with Israel at the center of it all, the focus will not be on the exaltation of the nation itself, but of Jesus, who will reign over all things. Israel will be a living example of what happens when a nation fully trusts in God and follows his ways. Their restoration during the millennium will be a testament to the power of divine grace and God's faithfulness to his promises. And this leads us to a deep reflection. If God has been faithful to Israel for all these centuries, even in its failures, how much more will he be faithful to all those who trust in his grace and follow his promises? This prepares us to better understand human nature during this time of peace and prosperity. Even with Israel and Jesus at the center, there will still be those who will resist, 
demonstrating that human rebellion is not limited to external circumstances. In the face of all that has been revealed about the final events, the arrest of Satan, the reign of Jesus, the judgment of the nations, and the ultimate victory over evil, one question echoes in our hearts. How does this change the way we live today? We know that the future is already written, that God's victory is assured, and that Satan will be defeated once and for all. But what does this mean for our walk now, as we await the fulfillment of those promises? Perhaps the greatest lesson we can draw from these final events is the urgency of our faith. If we know that Jesus will reign and that justice will prevail, why wait to give ourselves completely to him? The reality of Revelation is not just a distant account, it is an invitation to live with purpose and confidence now. We are called to be witnesses of God's grace, just as Israel will be in the future. But unlike waiting for the millennium, we have the opportunity to live this kingdom of justice and peace today through our faith in Jesus Christ. And here's a question that can't be ignored. Are we ready for the final judgment? Are we living as those who will be received into the kingdom or as those who will be separated at the last day? Jesus gives us today the chance to choose the path of salvation, of faith that transforms hearts and of grace that prepares us for the times to come. Every decision we make now is a reflection of where we will be when these events unfold. Therefore, the victory we see in Revelation is a foretaste of the victory we can experience every day when we trust in God and His promises. We do not need to wait for the future to experience the peace He has promised. It is available to us now in the midst of the daily battles we face. The battle has already been won by Jesus, and even though Satan tries to deceive us with lies and distractions, his ultimate fate is sealed. May this truth strengthen us to live boldly, knowing that God's justice will prevail and that, in the end, the victory is ours in Christ Jesus. We have come to the end of this in-depth study of the ultimate fate of Satan and mankind, but the real journey only begins now. Everything you have learned here cannot be left only in the sphere of knowledge. God is calling you to something greater, a true transformation that begins with faith, but is only completed with action. The prophecy of Revelation is much more than future events. It is a call to you today, to live with an eternal purpose, with your heart firmly grounded in Christ. The time to wait has passed. Now is the time to take a stand, to prepare spiritually for the challenges ahead, and above all, to trust in the promise of salvation that Jesus offers. Every choice we make today echoes in eternity. Satan's ultimate fate is sealed, and that of all mankind will be determined by whether or not to follow Jesus. Make no mistake, we are in a battle that has already been won, but which still requires our fidelity and determination. The peace that the Millennial Kingdom will bring will be the result of that victory, but to get there, God is asking for your commitment now. So how are you going to live knowing all this? This is the time to reflect and decide to live for the glory of God, no matter what. He is with you and has already secured victory. Now it's up to you to walk steadily in that direction. If this message has touched your heart, if you have understood the importance of what is to come, then don't let it stop here. This video is just the beginning of a journey and you can be a transformative agent in the lives of others. Leave your like, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications so you don't miss any content that will strengthen you for the final days. But not only that, Share this message with someone you know needs to hear. The truth needs to be spread, and you are a bearer of that truth. Together we will continue to learn, grow, and prepare for what God has in store for us. Now before closing, I want to invite you to a powerful prayer time. This is the time to stand before God, to open your heart and ask Him to prepare us, strengthen us, and guide us in every step we take. If you feel the weight of the spiritual battle, know that the victory has already been won, but we need God's grace and protection every day. Close your eyes now and pray with me, seeking the Holy Spirit with all your being, that He will renew your strength and prepare you for the times to come. We pray, Lord God Almighty, we praise and magnify you because we know that you have already won all battles. We believe in your power, Lord, and we acknowledge that without you, we are nothing. 
Today we stand before you, asking for your Holy Spirit to come upon us like a rushing wind, renewing our strength and preparing us for the difficult days ahead. May your grace cover us, strengthening us in faith, and may each of us be like a burning torch, carrying your light wherever we go. Father, we ask you to guard our hearts and keep us steadfast in your word. May every spiritual battle we face, may we remember that victory has already been won on the cross by Jesus Christ. We do not fear evil, for we trust that the Lord is in front of us, like a shield, protecting and guiding us. Your promise is eternal, and we cling to it with all our souls. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be poured out upon us now and always, in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God's peace be with you, and may you continue to stand firm, knowing that the victory is ours in Christ Jesus. If this message has spoken to your heart, be sure to watch our other videos. They will help you grow spiritually and prepare even more for what God has in store for you. May God bless you powerfully and see you in the next video. As we close another chapter together, I know some questions might still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk it alone. In the comments, you'll find a powerful key to this door many seek to open. The ebook, Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living a life of abundance. This is not just any book. It is the fruit of years of research, experience, and profound revelations now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that prevent your spiritual and financial growth. Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity meant for you. This ebook is more than words on a page. It's a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fulfillment and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It's a promise waiting to be fulfilled. With this guide, you're one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.